Hey everybody, welcome back. You know lately I've been talking a lot about files and how, the we, how we interact with those in our programming. Today I want to talk about a situation that I see students struggle with, which is when you have a program that's going to accept an argument which is a directory or a path to a file. I recently gave my operating systems class a project. One of the arguments to the program that they were going to make was a directory, and I actually wanted them to save some files in that directory. Now, one of the requirements I gave them is that that directory could be specified as a relative path or as an absolute path. And I actually noticed a lot of students struggle with that. They, they would take the path and they would do things like, they would check to see if it started with a forward slash. What if it ended with a slash? They're trying to detect if it's a relative path or an absolute path first and foremost. If it's a relative path, then they're trying to get the current directory and stick it together so that they have an absolute path if they needed an absolute path. And this can be a little confusing. So today I just wanna go through really quick a function that you might not be familiar with, and that is real path. The whole point of having real path is that we don't want you to have to be messing around, fiddling with string parsing and checking to see, is there a forward slash at the end of the directory or is there not? Instead, we just want you to be able to say, hey, I've got a relative path, can you make it absolute for me? And so that's what real path does. So with real path, you're gonna pass in the relative path and you're going to either give it a buffer to where you want the absolute path to be saved or you can pass in null and real path will allocate a buffer for you. I strongly recommend the second option because sometimes you don't know how big the path is gonna be, right? You don't know how much space is actually gonna be required for that absolute path. And you might have a really long directory structure. And there is this macro, which is max path, which is defined, which is usually 4096. But I just find it safer to essentially rely on real path to allocate this amount of space that it needs. So here's a simple example. It just takes relative paths as an argument, passes it to real path, and then it prints out the absolute path. And the nice thing about this is I can, I can pass an absolute path in here and it'll work just fine. And so in this case, if you give me a path, I don't have to know if it's relative or absolute. I just pass it to real path and I end up with an absolute path. And this is really helpful if I'm trying to use the path you give me to figure out other paths like subdirectories and whatever, it can be helpful to actually use real path to just sort of normalize my paths. So anyway, another quick tip when working with files, I just wanted to make it a available to you in case it's helpful. I hope it's helpful on your next project and until next time I will see you later.